Welcome to Frequency Matters, the R for Microwave Update. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the April oscillator and amplifier issue. Right. And the cover story is written by Alexander Tanakin of Micro Lambda, and he takes a look at all the various oscillator technologies, the pros and cons of each, and also gives us a kind of a future look on what could be happening in, down the road. So if you ever want to catch up on your oscillator technology, this one it's, article will it's really It's a good do article, for you. yeah. Uh, what else do we have for technical features that we didn't cover last time? So a couple of interesting articles. I feel a little funny saying interesting because I think all our articles are interesting, but these seem to be quite pertinent. One is from uh, Southeast University in uh, Nanjing, China, and it covers uh, basically self-interference cancellation techniques for full duplex radios. Big topic. And I didn't appreciate kind of that. You know, my sense of full duplex is, you know, you're transmitting on one frequency, receiving on the other. But clearly, using full duplex on the same frequency, where you're transmitting and receiving at the same time, would increase the data rate capability of a radio. And it's one of the technologies that's being looked at for 5G. So it's, as you say, it's becoming a big topic. So this article basically describes a circuit technique that they use that gets 50 dB of uh, isolation or cancellation between the transmit and receive at about 2.5 gigahertz. So it, interesting article. And then the other article we have from uh, the University of Aveiro in Portugal in joint collaboration with National Instruments, and this talks about D parameters. So you can obviously know S parameters. D parameters relate to mixed signal systems, where you might have an analog side, an analog port, a digital port, and probably a clock port. And this is important for simulating mixed signal systems. So they write about the theory of D parameters and then an instrumentation system where you can actually characterize them. So a couple of particularly interesting articles this time. And last time we covered the product features and noting the MVP was from Inoki Wave. They right. collaborated with Ball Aerospace and that was just announced the release of their 28 gigahertz phased array. Mm -hmm. And this is the first commercially available 5G array that was specifically designed for infrastructure at 28 gigahertz. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see what happens on that. And we talked to Bob Donahue about his right. developments in his company. Right. Really interesting to see that little uh, prototype. Yeah, pretty amazing stuff. And Dow Key had a tech brief, and that is a DC to 26 and a half gigahertz SPDT and SP6T switches. And those right. are for the automatic test equipment, very high performance, low insertion loss switches. And we had one other uh, tech brief, right? Right. Exodus Advanced Communications has an interesting 10-watt uh, power amplifier that covers 32 to 40 gigahertz. And it's a gas-fed design, class AB design. It's probably about the size, or one, one of the available form factors is about the size of a half a sheet of paper, uh, maybe about an inch thick. And uh, they also have one that's rack mountable with AC power and cooling and so forth. And this is a clear uh, product that you could use for 5G testing, for example, stuff at 39 gigahertz or any of the other kinds of applications in that frequency band. Yeah, and speaking of 5G, we go to news and there right. certainly were some developments there. Uh, AT&T and NI announced a collaboration to develop a very fast uh, prototyping for channel characterization in millimeter waves for 5G. And what it does is it takes all the different angles of arrival in multiple receivers and processes them at the same time in real time. And this is termed the porcupine by right. AT&T, as you can see from the picture. Yeah. And it has all those receivers can do everything simultaneously for real-time measurement of the entire channel. Whereas in the past, they had a single receiver that had to pan and tilt, take measurements at different angles, right. and then put it all together so it could take 15 minutes or longer yeah. compared to this 150 millisecond measurement time. Yeah, it's amazing. You can put it on a vehicle and just do drive-by testing. Basically. Yeah, I mean, these are really the innovations that are going to make us achieve 5G ahead right. of schedule. And then also, in order to make 5G research easier, the FCC announced a new web portal where researchers can go online and apply for a license for a program or research project. And so this really makes things much easier and faster. And they chose two universities to test this out with them. Mm. And that's NYU Wireless right. and also University of Colorado in Boulder. So it's another good uh, push by the FCC to make things easier in the U.S. for 5G. Cool. What did you see in the news? So speaking of the FCC, they just completed a what they call a broadcast incentive auction where basically they've now freed up 70 megahertz of spectrum between six and 700 megahertz uh, that can be used for mobile applications. And the way they structured this was really pretty interesting. They first kind of went to TV broadcasters and said, how much would it take for you to give up your frequency, close your station down or move to a different frequency, whatever. And then they went to mobile operators and said, how much would you be willing to pay for this spectrum? 
And so the mobile op operators collectively bid basically, I think it was $19.8 billion, right. of which about $10 billion goes to the broadcasters. And so the big winners in this, T-Mobile, number one, also DISH, Comcast, and U.S. Cellular are the big uh, players that get Spectrum. And then it's going to take 39 months, believe it or not, for the uh, TV stations to kind of those that are going off the air to go off the air, the others to reallocate yeah, frequencies. There's a lot to coordinate. So yeah. they have this contiguous frequency spectrum. And it's, an, it's FDD, it's not full duplex, but it's uh, 35 megahertz for uplink, 35 megahertz for downlink. The more spectrum, the better. The more spectrum, the better, exactly. And then the other one that caught my eye, the China Academy for Information and Communications Technology and NXP Semiconductor reached an agreement, a collaboration, where they're going to work together on what they call intelligent transportation. And that's going to be developing standards as well as products that can be used for vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure. And of course, that's uh, a big push in China right now. So it gives NXP, I'm sure, a good position in that market. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. And there was one more interesting thing that came across my desk recently. Uh, Fractus Antennas sent yeah. me this sample. It's shaped like a phone, and you can open it up. And they've developed this component that will replace antennas in handsets and IoT devices. So this component actually directly radiates the RF signals from the backplane. It does require some change in circuitry, but it could be a very low-cost alternative to multiple antennas. Right. Uh, it's, it's FR4, so very low cost, can yep. be pick and place, so that also reduces the cost of assembly. And it's very broadband. This particular one, M Extend, which is about 5 millimeters square, hmm. can cover almost down to 700 megahertz and up to 2.7 gigahertz. So Interesting. it's like 12 frequency bands, and it can also be extended to accommodate Bluetooth and Wi-Fi signals. Yep. So a uh, very interesting product. Uh, we look forward to following it. I hope we can get yeah. a technical article from them to kind of explain the details about how it right. works. How it works, exactly. How about for events? So we are, uh, as you well know, gearing up to go to EDICon in China, where we'll be in Shanghai to see those events. And also want to remind our viewers, we have a few weeks left for you to submit an abstract for EDICon USA, which is coming up September 11th, 12th, and 13th, being held again in Boston this year. And you have till the end of April to submit an abstract. So please give some consideration to doing that. We'd love to have you join us to present the work that you're doing. And I think that's a wrap. We want to uh, thank our sponsors, uh, Anoki Wave and Skyworks, for making this program possible today. Both of them are premier semiconductor companies in the mobile and 5G spaces. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to having you join us on the next episode.